Picture this, you're evil geniuses, and you're playing in the grand finals of the Rainbow Six Siege Pro League Finals in Milan. You're up a map, and you've steamrolled your way to championship point. And it'll be the Yokai Drone and Nathan Valenti who will push EG to match point! There's only one round left. The clock is counting down. You're up three players to two. All you have to do is hold out for 30 seconds and you'll be world champions. Here comes the tension, here comes the push. But the crazy thing is, even with all the odds in your favor, no one expects you to win. Why? Because you've been here before. You've already come within an inch of glory and watched as a win that should have been yours slipped through your fingers. The Hibana just waiting. They'll look to push together. The diffuser in a position where they'll have to see when the Hibana goes through. One will cover the doorway as they start to diffuse. Pengu goes for one on the young. Can he go the second? They're on the known as the best team in the world, never having that distinction until today. And now, it's about to happen again. The lead doesn't matter. The odds are irrelevant. Little do you know, against every expectation, you're about to choke even harder than before. Here comes the tension. Here comes the push. Waiting for the vault on in is Canadian. Will he be able to secure the kill? He sees the tracers go. No! The nerves. It's the nerves. All right, but before we get into all that, I wanna make sure to tell you guys to tune into Ubisoft's Rainbow Six Siege US Nationals. The finals are coming up on the 13th, and trust me, you do not wanna miss it. For more on that and all kinds of Six Siege action, check out the links in the description below. Now, in order to understand just how bad EG's choke was, you have to understand the stakes behind it. You need to understand everything this roster had been through up to that point. They're good guys. Once upon a time, EG were juggernauts. In an esports dominated by Europeans, this Canadian-led crew was a diamond in the rough. Back then, they played as Continuum, and they proved that North America had what it took to be the best. It's 1v2 for LMs. This is going to be the deciding factor. Continuum can't find him, but there's the second oh! kill! Retro, they're going to get it! More than enough time to defuse. Continuum are the first North American team to win Rainbow Six Pro League. In addition to being the only North American roster to ever win a Pro League final, they also entered the first six invitational in 2017 as favorites, thanks to Canadians' unparalleled ability to counter strat. We are a fast paced team that relies heavily on counter strats, as well as having some of the most talented players in the world. And with the entirety of North America behind them, Continuum won, cementing themselves as the best Siege roster in the world. Snake will push his way in. Is it tucked in the corner? 10 seconds to go, comes on around, loses the fight to Canadian. One to go, it's Avian alone, and he drops down. Continuum are your world champions. The problem is that after hoisting the hammer in Montreal, Continuum fell into a bit of a slump. Continuum, your world champions are done in this season of the Pro League and Elevate will advance to playoffs. Did that just sneak up on anyone else? Is it, am I the only one feeling the, the, like the bafflement that CTM just got eliminated from the Pro League but not making it to finals? One reason for this was that Europe decided to put their foot down and remind North America who was in charge. This led to a slew of incredible new teams, including Penta, a super team led by rising star Pengu. I'm a very dedicated player and I've accumulated over 8,000 hours of actual playtime in the game, which is almost a year. By the 2018 Invitational, Canadian and his teammates were yesterday's news. Despite being the defending champions, no one was thinking about EG. All eyes were on Penta. But EG were resilient. They topped their group, grinded their way to the Grand Finals, and found themselves with a two-map lead over the team that overshadowed them all year. So much fucking pressure is on them right now. Yeah, they are shit. they are the biggest favorites, and they are down o fucking two. And then, in the third map, it all came crashing down. Penta is absolutely crushing EG now. Canadian once again in a situation where he will need to clutch. It's a one v four. Take him down to next to no health. He'll take Goga, but he now has a shield in his way. Very difficult. With only one, be able to eliminate Amante, but Penta takes their first map. Slowly but surely, EG crumbled. It wasn't just that they couldn't close. They couldn't do anything. They couldn't shoot. They couldn't strategize. It's like they forgot how to play Siege. Possibly goes for a plant. Baiting it out. Goes for the ADS. Necrox can't hit his dodge. 
and Fabian wins it! How does that happen? Before EG knew it, Penta won two maps, and were on the verge of closing out the biggest comeback Siege had ever seen. It's 2-2. Two -two. It's Pengu and Fabian left. Two of the best known players on that team. Our captain submission, Frager, Fabian down, it's Pengu. The Ash just waiting, or rather the Hibana just waiting. They'll look to push together. The Diffuser in a position where they'll have to see when the Hibana goes through. One will cover the doorway as they start to defuse. Pengu goes for one on the young. Can he go the second? The most wins now of any team, including a whole world championship. And evil geniuses just let it slip by an inch. In the months after EG's cataclysmic choke, most people in the community were wondering the same thing. How could you possibly bounce back from a loss that traumatizing? Yeah, I know at the Invitational when I was talking to Amar when you, when you guys lost and then you, um, and you took some time before you came out to see me and he went back and got you to make sure you were okay. They're good guys. The crazy thing is, EG did bounce back. A few months later at the Paris Major, EG grinded all the way back to the Grand Finals to face off against Pengu and his compatriots yet again. The problem is that this time, they fell right out of the gate. Like, we should have been way fucking closer there, guys. There's a disconnect, right? Just think about it. Everyone chill out, we got this, right? They lost two maps almost immediately and then slowly lost grip on the third. That's it! One more, a 3-0! Absolute destruction! The European squad is EG failed to find the opener, not a single map! And by the 2019 Invitational, they couldn't even make it past the quarterfinals. 1v1 against Laxing, and Laxing on top! Reciprocity eliminate evil geniuses! I did not think this day would come when we would see them shut down in the quarters like this at the big stage. By the time the Pro League Season 9 Finals rolled around, it felt like EG's time had come and gone. Like that one horrific collapse against Penta had broken their spirits beyond repair, and that they'd never reach another Grand Finals again, let alone win one. The thing is, that's what everyone said last time. And just like last time, EG weren't ready to bow out. On top of a roster change, they made several role swaps, injecting new life into a cast of seasoned veterans who'd been together forever. And as soon as the tournament started, it showed. They both make it in on the vault. Geo should still have an Echo Drone remaining, and there goes Cyber. Navi's on the trade onto Canadian. Behind the deployable, the man with the diffuser is down. There's one second left. Navi's in a 1v3. Evil geniuses to the semifinals against FaZe. North America has a representative on Championship Sunday in Season 9. The problem was EG's grand finals opponent, Team Empire a lean, mean, Russian killing machine who'd had their names on the trophy since day one. A Herculean effort is required, but Magnet gets down, finished off. Aces will need to be able to do anything, but it's a perfect third map. Empire cannot be stopped. And that machine that we talk about will not break now. It will not break ever. Needless to say, the community was skeptical that EG could win this final. Empire were a ridiculously explosive roster, often considered the best in the world. People were expecting a beatdown. Is this gonna be a repeat of Sao Paulo two years ago, or is this is the underdog story? But they weren't expecting EG to deliver it. Right now, EG is just demolishing Empire on this round. Oh, Geo gets that. How about a flawless round? How about a start? It's as good as you're gonna find from EG. Round after round, EG pummeled Empire into the dirt. They were counter-stratting their way to what was looking like North America's first world championship in over two years. And it seems like Empire can't recover at this point. They're at the double window, waiting and prepped and ready with Geo low on HP. And it was right at that moment, match point, mere seconds from Vindication, that everything went to shit. Which brings us back here. Here comes the tension, here comes the push. Canadian didn't need to peak white stairs, but he did. And here's what happened next. 
down on white stairs, waiting for the vault on in is Canadian. Will he be able to secure the kill? He sees the tracers go. No, Scyther will win the fight. He'll inch his way on up. Geo's gonna be next in line, but this could be a tough shot and Empire could wrestle away the round. There's Geo just waiting. He doesn't pull the trigger. He sees it, he pops up. Oh no, Geo, you gotta hit your shots. Young will be the last one left. He was so important for FaZe. He turns his back. He's got the pistol, but Shepard will deny the comeback from EG on that round. The thing is, EG had plenty of chances to right the ship, but they didn't. That one round sealed their fate. But some NA fans held out hope. After all, there was no way EG could choke even harder than last time, right? A bunch of free kills here for whoever that is. It's Geo, pops up from behind and gets, no, he doesn't shut down by Joystick picking away at Necrox, it'll be Scyther there, Shepard as well, and it's falling apart at the seams for Evil Geniuses. Evil Geniuses have just not been present. EG sitting now on the precipice of defeat. This could be the end of EG's miracle return to form. And NVK will watch as Geo goes for the plant. The sound cue will give Dim the information. Oh, he takes one down! Oh! And a new empire will rise as you crown a new champion here in Milan! EG should have won that series. But even though they didn't, they still walked away from it feeling empowered. Like they finally remembered what it was like to play at their level. No one was negative about it. Like every, everyone right after, like like that sucked, that stung. <laughs> like er everyone had that reaction. No one's not going to. But like by the time we took like we took a little time off and we talked about it after, like everyone felt good. Everyone was like, like we played insane. Unfortunately, after falling short at the Raleigh Major, Canadian and his teammates decided that an amicable split was in order. Canadian went on to join Space Station Gaming while EG replaced him with an up-and-comer. It was the end of one of Siege's greatest eras. Canadian and his teammates are, without a doubt, one of the greatest rosters to ever touch Siege. They're the only North American roster to ever win a Pro League Final or an Invitational, and Milan reminded us why. No one expected them to make it that far, and the result was one of the most memorable Siege Finals of all time. So here's to the EGs of the world. And it's all that she wrote for this one! The ones who fell short. He had it! He had it in his hands! The ones who should have won, but didn't. They had the game in the palm of their hand, man. They threw it in the trash. Because without them, esports would be a hell of a lot less interesting. What a wonderful match! An absolute heartbreaker. I mean, you got that feeling, Michael, at least I did, that we were looking at an opportunity to go to overtime. It sure did feel like we were back in the Six Invitational in 2018. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.